them that I am not the lying, cheating tramp that everybody seems to think I am. Oh, by the way, when we go to Buenos Aires, mm -hmm. we're married. Are you proposing bigamy to me? No, just a little lie. See, it's a different culture down there, and Don Alonzo, he's a very proper and religious gentleman. He would not approve of us being unmarried, so we'll pretend, all right? Oh, I see. And does this little pretense carry into the bedroom? There will be two bedrooms with a connecting door, which I've already ordered deadbolts for and guard dogs for your side, all right? <laughs> and a hatchet. That's for when you want to break down the door so you can crawl in next to me. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, I'm beginning to notice a real pattern here, man. Uh-huh. You see, first, <laughs> for that, first you reassure me, and then you start the pressure. No oh, pressure, just a prediction. As time passes and cord fades from your mind, and I move into your everyday life, it's gonna happen. Max. Hey, what do you say? I'm a very patient man. Oh, yeah, yeah, I noticed when you gave me the ultimatum yesterday that you were gonna leave today. And yeah, did you notice we're doing a lot more talking here than we are packing? And we're never going to get to Buenos Aires unless you get out of here right now. Okay, uh, all right, I'll tell you what. I'll go back and get my stuff. I'll be back with the limo to pick you up. A limo, huh? Mm-hmm. You're going with Max Holden now, baby. First class, all the way. standing here like one of the statues from the Plaza de Mayo. I'm furious. That phone call was unbelievable. I thought I had a very powerful hold on a certain young lady back in Landview. But I made the mistake of telling her I was in South America. Not in Buenos Aires, I hope. You think I'm stupid? Of course not. I told her she still thinks I'm in Brazil. The point is, she's not afraid of me anymore. So she won't help us to find out about this Max Holden. No, that's all right. Well, you were on the telephone. I was pondering the fact that it could take days to get information on him. You know, he could be here right now and having bought the ranch already from Don Alonso. And time is what we don't have. That crop is going to be ready for harvest in another week or two. So exactly. Why don't you and I sit down for a while and think of a plan? One that guarantees that Max Holden will never get an opportunity to buy the Bella Vista ranch. Diane's already 20 minutes late, Cassie. She's having plenty of time to get here. Maybe she's not afraid of Jamie at all. Maybe we're completely wrong about her. Maybe she was thinking he wouldn't risk coming back to the country in the first place after he managed to get away. Or she's too afraid to show up. <sighs> or maybe she's figured out this whole thing is a setup. Or, 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 or this is going to drive us crazy. Look, why don't we just go on our instincts and then talk about something else? All right. So, what do you think about those giants? How convenient that Cassie was home for both flower deliveries, watching me closely and looking for my reaction. <laughs> and then wondering what admirer would send me flowers two days in a row, forcing me to lie. She and John only pretended to believe my story about Jamie and that phony ring. Jamie's in South America. Of course he wouldn't come back here. <laughs> How ironic that he should call and save me for a change. hoping that we could uh, present a united front. 
seems to me that the less we make of this, the easier it will be for them. Exactly. Can you manage that? Clint, I am not the basket case that you would like me to be, you know. I didn't mean to start... Well, then just trust me on it, all right? Yes, I can pretend that it is not the end of my world when you take them out of here, bag, baggage, and cradle. You know, as I told you in court, uh, there will be no restrictions on your visits. I mean, about them coming over, spending the night, or uh, you visiting them, or whatever. I would like to say thank you, but it sticks in my throat. Jessica's awake. I'm going to spend some time alone with my daughter. sitting here having a quiet coronary. I get Tina packing, and then I can't find you to get the money. Relax, Max. I was at the bank. When I got your message, I came right over. Where is it? I'd like to take a little look at this beautiful green stuff, please. Okay. Here you are. Max, I wouldn't count that in public unless you want to get mugged at the nearest corner. Oh, it's all there. You can trust me. The way you hate Tina, I have no doubts for you. Max, I have a few doubts, like your ability to keep from Buenos Aires. What will you do if, if she gets this sudden desire to want to see Cord? Well, I can't tie her and keep her prisoner, but uh, I'd bet on the fact that once we have some good times down there, Cord is just going to be a painful memory. Mm -hmm. I laid it on about Kate and Cord, that little lie you told me to hand her. It worked like a charm. She doesn't think she has a chance with him now. If she did, you couldn't get a tow truck to get her out of Landview. I have one question for you. What if Cord changes his mind? Oh, no, 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 he won't. Kate Sanders is everything wonderful that Tina is not. And he is slowly coming around to Kate's charms. I mean, if, 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 if Cord should get a sudden longing for Tina, believe me, it's only momentary. And why? Why would he want Tina when he's got Kate? I wouldn't know about that, but he sure was in love with her at one time. You didn't happen to be actively working to break that up, did you? No, no, I didn't have to, Max. This lady that you're whisking out of town has a, a built-in self-destructive button. Yeah, I know you don't understand. Let's hope you'll never have to. The thing is, Tina is not tough. I mean, she wishes she was, she tries, but she's really very, very vulnerable. Would you spare me of this psychological insight? I heard all of this from my son before he found out the truth about her. Maybe it's me who ought to be rethinking this deal. Max. Tina loves money, and you've got it. And, and since you're going to be making a whole lot of it on the horse ranch, Tina is going to be very, very happy. Look, all you have to do is give her everything that she wants. She'll never betray you. She won't even lie to you, okay? Now, when do you think you'll be able to pay me back? Mm. Oh, and by the way, I'm not going to charge you any interest since you've already done me the favor of, of falling for Tina's charm. Mm. Thank you, Maria. Mm -hmm. I can pay you back in one year. And you receive the first monthly payment in 60 days, okay? All right. Oh, and I also happen to have a few pictures of Bella Vista. I thought it might set your mind at ease if you took a little look at your investment. It's a picture of Don Alonzo in front of the fireplace in the hacienda. Mm -hmm. Don pronto, señor Medina. Don Alonso, quiero que conozca a mi socio luego, un americano. Jamie Sanders. Very nice to meet you, senor. Jamie Sanders. This is Don Alonso, owner of the Bella Vista Ranch. What brings you here, sir? Well, I came mainly for investments. But my friend Dante here tells me that this ranch could be a terrific one. Did he not also tell you it is not for sale? 
But Don Amir, Don Alonso, that is not quite true. I understand that you are prepared to sell this to an ex-rank hand of yours? Yes, but he's the only one to whom I am willing to sell it. We have been over this conversation muchas veces, I Senor Medina. I am only uh, trying to save you money on your property. Jamie Sanders comes from a very wealthy American family. He is willing to pay double, no, triple what Max Holden can pay. Why is my ranch so important to you, huh, when there are so many others available? As I've explained, your property adjoins mine. It's a natural impulse to enlarge my ranch. Ranch? From what I hear, you only have one herd and already far too much grazing land. No, there are rumors, Senor Medina, that... Uh, what you actually use your land for, certain uh, crops, which poison people's lives. That is ridiculous. Those are lies, senor. I am an honest rancher, Don Alonso. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'm not sure what you're talking about. But I've told senor Medina that my interest in a partnership is strictly horses. I want to breed them. It's been a lifelong ambition. You are young to have such a dream. And such money. Well, as Dante said, I come from a wealthy family. I'm sorry, I will not change my mind. Nothing you can say will make me change my mind. I, I am too old and too ill. Sorry. I want my ranch to pass on to someone I care about, someone I trust. Uh, someone who will carry on the traditions I have established. Old men. <laughs> Sometimes care about such things. You'll understand that one day. I don't think I'll ever be so sentimental. <laughs> I thought so too when I was your age, but now... <laughs> money doesn't matter to me. Who knows how long I will be on this earth. All right, Alonso. What about loyalty to your country? How can you sell this prime piece of real estate to a gringo instead of a fellow Argentinian? Your gringo is better than my gringo. Ah, <sighs> Senor, it would I... only be a partnership. Dante would retain the deed. This patriotic appeal will not do you any good. It will not get me to change my mind. It is getting boring and tiring. Please. Senor Medina, say farewell. I will do as you wish, Don Alonso. It is that you have always been known as a very intelligent person, and yet in this business... Forgive me. I will not insult you. Ciao. Jamie, I'm sorry. I'll be out in a minute. What a beautiful gun. Oh. <laughs> that is the prize of my collection. This gun was made in the uh, 1700s. You have a whole collection, huh? Well, if I stay in Buenos Aires long enough, I'd love for you to show them to me. Hmm? I have an interest in guns myself. Oh? Uh -huh. Don Alonso, if you could perhaps steer me to another ranch, another one as prosperous and beautiful as yours. I'm afraid I don't get out much lately. Uh... No, if, if you want to look at other answers, you will have to go to a proper agent. I understand. This Max Holden you intend to sell to, I get the feeling you're very fond of him. Oh, yes. God did not bless me with children, and my wife died many years ago. He brought laughter into my life. He's a good man. And you're sure that you can trust him? Of course. Why would you ask such a question? Well, I'm just... Wondering if maybe he'd turn around and sell the ranch for profit after buying it so inexpensively. No, no. This is the fulfillment of Max's dream. Huh? He's not a greedy American out for profit alone. No offense. None taken. Alonso! <laughs> If things don't work out, I guess I could head back west again. But I'm planning to be very happy in Landview pretty soon. I mean, it might take a little bit longer than I'd like it to, but I'm beginning to feel that it, it will happen. Oh, 
What's coming up? A man? A career? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I might jinx it. Oh, are we talking about uh, Tina's sister's husband here? What lies has Tina been telling you? Just opinions. You're in love with a man that you were happy that the marriage broke up? Okay, Maybe I don't want to hear another word, okay? Well, I'm going to renegotiate this deal. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? I mean, you're a little bit more touchy about this than you are about Cord and No. Tina. No, I... Oh, it, it just makes me so angry when people try to slander my friendship with Clint. They try to say that I broke up their marriage, okay? Now, it's Vicky's fault, okay, not mine, fine, right? Fine, fine, fine. I'm sorry I brought it up. I just happened... Never mind. Just forget, okay? Okay, um... I guess I gotta say goodbye. This better be goodbye, Max Holden. Hey, I just want you to know that I appreciate your faith in me. You're taking me for this loan, but I have to admit something. Part of me hates like hell the fact that Tina and I have been manipulated. Max, will you just shut up and give me a big hug and get out of here? <laughs> Muchas gracias, Maria. Oh, good luck finding that dream of yours, huh? As we say in Argentina, ciao. Ciao, Max. I don't know, John. I'm beginning to feel really foolish. Maybe we're wrong about Diane. Maybe she isn't involved with Jamie at all. Just relax, will you? Let's give it another half hour. All right. Jamie Sanders! This is Lieutenant Garrison! We have the place surrounded. You can't escape! Ready? Don't shoot! It's John Russell! Jamie Sanders isn't here. John. Cassie, what? Hi, guys. It's all right. I know these two. Was Sanders here? Uh, as far as we know, he's still out of the country. Terrific. Hey. Levitt, call off the operation till everyone report back to the precinct. Now, you want to tell me what you're doing here? Why don't you tell us what you're doing here? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? I got information that Jamie Sanders was hiding out here. Who gave... Instead, I find you two. Oh, who gave you that information? Diane Bristol. Well, I guess that's no surprise to you two. Diane Bristol's the one that tipped you off. That's right. She showed up at headquarters very frightened, saying that Sanders had sent her two bouquets of flowers. She showed us the cards that were attached. The delivery this morning also included a card that ordered her to meet him here. So let me guess. You two sent the flowers and the cards, and we're trying to set her up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But looks like she set us up instead. Mom. Hi, darling. How was school, huh? Great. Yeah? We had a half a day. There was a food fight in the cafeteria. A food fight? My goodness, were you in it? No, nah, the teachers broke it up before I had a chance. Oh. There was hamburgers, french fries flying everywhere. <laughs> I was in the bathroom. It's the whole thing. Well, you'll probably have another opportunity before you graduate. So, did the judge make up his mind? Yes, he did. Uh... Guess what he said? You and Joey and Jessica are going to be living at Grandpa Ace's with me. So, I guess these are two young fellas who are going to be riding horses every single day, huh? <laughs> My little cowboys. And you know how much fun Grandpa Ace's house always is, right? What about you? Me? Well, darlings, you're going to see me every single day. Either I'll come over there or you'll come over here. We stay sometimes? Yes, of course you can. Daddy and I are going to uh, talk on the phone a lot, and we're going to make uh, plans for weekends and after school, everything. But the only thing that's going to be different is, uh, well, you'll be spending all the nights at Grandpa Ace's and a lot more time in a car. <laughs> is this forever? No. No, this is not forever. This is for about six months. You see, Daddy and I didn't get divorced. You're not getting a divorce? <laughs> All right. No, we're not. We thought we'd take another six months, 
and see if we couldn't work things out. So we're just uh, legally separated. But because we are separated, Judge Ollie had to make a decision as to where you're going to live. But why didn't he pick Mom? Uh, well, we don't really know why he didn't pick me. But I'm sure that he thought it was probably the best thing for you right now under these circumstances. That's all. You're going to be all right by yourself. Me? Oh, well, of course I'm going to be all right by myself. You know, you're not all that far away anyway. Grandpa's house is only 15 minutes from here. And we can pick up the telephone anytime we want, and we can talk to each other. Are we taking all our toys? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You want to leave some of them here for when you come over and visit Mommy, don't you? Right. How about that big school meeting? Are both going to be there? Absolutely. Oh, you can count on you it. You bet. How about Kim? Uh... Kim will be with us. Uh, she's going to be around just like usual. Well, maybe it won't be that bad. Oh, yeah. It's not going to be that bad. Really, you can trust me on that, okay? How about Jessica? Doesn't she need you? I mean, she's so little. We can take care of her. She likes us. <laughs> oh, my. My littlest man. You really are growing up, aren't you? Come here, darling. You're my other man. And you're getting bigger, smarter every day, aren't you? Tell you what, uh, Kim is packing your clothes and things. I think we better go in there and make sure she doesn't leave something out that you want to take with you, okay? Come on, we'll go in your room. Can we leave the violin here? Well, <laughs> you're going to need them to, uh, for your lessons. I mean, Grandpa might not mind that, but you are going to need them for your lessons and for your practice. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. You know, Vicky, when we work, we really work. I work quite a team. Please just let me get through this. All right, it's clear. Let's go. Dante, what's wrong? I'm fine. All right, Jimmy, this is what we will do. We drag his body to the car and cover it with a blanket. And then we wait till nightfall and then dump him behind one of the bordellos in the city. He kept talking about his health. Are the police gonna fall for that? You know, in his younger days after his wife died, Don Alonso was very famous for being a, a womanizer and drinking a lot. I think the police will assume that this old man had his last fling and found death in an alley afterwards. Jamie, do me a favor. Uh, get me a bottle of whiskey over there. We'll pour it over his body after we dump him in the alley. I think he was drunk. Some pimp took advantage of him. I forgot to look for his papers. We have to come back later. You crazy? We can't come back no, here. No, don't worry. My men are watching. I have to make sure that he did not have a will leaving the property to Matt Holden. Otherwise, the ranch goes up for public sale. And we are the public. And we will buy it! Alonso! See, now, you've been crying again. Yeah, but it is my very last cry, all right? Yeah, oh, come here. That's what I was put on this earth for, to dry those tears and to make that lovely little face smile. You all through packing? Yeah. Yeah, I packed up all my prior life, and you know, I'm not even going to ship anything, because I am going to just take it all with me. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, and everyone will think I've just disappeared. But you know what? I don't care. In fact, I've been spending a lot of time thinking who's going to throw the celebration party, and personally, I think Clint will be uh, Come on, come on. Let's not get bitter, all right? You're right. You know, you were right. And just, you know, as I was doing all this packing and everything, I started retracing my life, you know, and all the things that have happened to me recently. And it occurred to me... Here, you take this. It occurred to me, you know, how happy I was and everything when I found out that Victor Lord was my real father. It was like Christmas all over again. And all of a sudden, it was just winter again when everybody decided they didn't want me or anything. And just when everything was at its lowest, a chord came into my life. And lit up your tree. 
No. No, it's winter again. And you know what? I hate winter. I do, so I'm really looking forward to all the, all the sun in Buenos Aires. Oh, Tina. It's too cold up here. Did I ever tell you that I was a Leo? And that's the sign of the sun. Oh. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? Oh, that's just some stuff, of course. I'm going to have the hotel give it to him. You didn't tell him where you're going, did you? No, of course not. It's just some pictures he took back in El Paso, right, when he... He's falling in love with you? Yeah, I agree. Leave him grieving. Because, lady, I have got you on my arm. <laughs> All I know is that Diane came to the police with information about a wanted fugitive while you two were busy wasting our time. I should run you in for this. But you won't. Will you? Jamie shot a cop, remember? Don't ever pretend that Jamie is in town when he isn't, okay? And lay off Diane unless you have solid proof that she was working with him. And then if you do have proof, you'll bring it to me. All right. Sorry about the inconvenience. Acts like he wanted to get a Medal of Honor pinned on his chest for capturing the notorious Jamie Sanders. <laughs> well, he does have a right to be angry. So where did we go wrong? Are we wrong about Diane? Or did she just figure Jamie wouldn't risk coming back? We're gonna have to think about that, aren't we? <sighs> Murray, it's Diane. Not wonderful, thank you. I'm calling to tell you to get out of town. You have seen the sketch that the cops made of you. And on top of that, Dorian's daughter is real suspicious of me. In fact, I think she even tried to set a trap for me, which I figured out at the last minute. No way! I am not going to blow my relationship with Dorian. I don't care what Cassie does or what she thinks. And, and, and now, especially, since Dorian is putting me in her will. You heard right. And I will do anything to protect my position. Anything. Is uh, Mrs. Buchanan up yet? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, uh, would you mind if I waited in the library on the off chance that she wakes up soon? It's uh, 10 o'clock already. Yes, of course, sir. There That's you are. You. I'll have coffee sent in, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, Heron. Sir. How was uh, Mrs. Buchanan last night? I, I know she wasn't speaking with anyone. Well, she was still awake around 11.30 when I retired, and she requested that the phones be disconnected. It's my guess that she didn't fall asleep until the wee hours, so. Yeah, sir. Probably. I must admit, I hardly get any sleep myself worrying about her. Heron, would you mind knocking on her door to see that she's all right? If Mrs. Buchanan's usually up by now. Uh, I'm sure she won't mind if I let her know that you're here, sir. Thank you. Heron? Heron, uh, was up checking on Vicky. How are you? Hey, what are you doing? Playing hooky from work? No, not quite. Briggs told me I didn't have to come in until later on this afternoon, so we're just sitting around, wondering what I was going to do all day. Oh, come on, I got some coffee ready. Oh. Um. Ah. Thanks. It's okay. So how are you? Ah, you're still thinking about Tina and the pregnancy. No, I'm not thinking of Tina anymore. I realized at first I had a few doubts as to whether or not she was capable of telling me a lie about 
something I thought was real important, but I no longer have any doubts. She could do it, and end the story. Well, I'm glad you made up your mind, but maybe it would be a good idea to check with her doctor. I'll leave that to you. Did you talk to Clint? Yes, I did. He said that Vicky was incredible when she was helping the kids move out last night. Oh, he also said he was worried about him because she didn't show how upset she really was. I'm worried about her, too. Hello? I don't know what... Good morning. Hey, Mel. Hi, Morning. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey, where'd you get my old hat? Look at that. You left that in Tina's suite. Oh, what did she do? She tracked you down so you can give it to me? No, not exactly. The hotel manager gave it to me. Tina's instructions. Apparently, she checked out yesterday, left town, and no forwarding address. Listen, Dante, even if we do find a will, including Holden, how do we know that Don Alonso doesn't have another one stashed away in some lawyer's office somewhere? There's a very nice thing about Don Alonso. He didn't trust lawyers. Some years ago, he lost a great deal of money for precisely that reason. Considering how friendly he was to you, I find it surprising that you'd know anything at all about him. Well, we used to be until I got into the cocaine smuggling business. That stupid old man, he never was really interested in wealth. Let me tell you, Dante, I've had a few doubts myself. But the chances of anyone finding me down here are just about zero. Uh-huh. Well, Max, I must say I am impressed by the way you <laughs> spend money. <laughs> Woo! But you know, uh, I am going to... Uh, Check to make sure there are indeed separate bedrooms. Uh-huh. Oh. I can't believe this. A few weeks ago, I thought my dream was dead in the dust, and then I got staked, met you. Staked? Uh, the, the silver mine, you know, with all the jewelry, all the earrings, the bracelets gushing forth. What do you want to do first? Rest up, or uh, you want to do a little sightseeing before we head out to the ranch? No, I want to take a tour of the entire city. Oh, and uh, by the way, the uh, separate bedrooms and separate locks will be just fine. Anything to please you, Mrs. Holden? <laughs> Would you stop that? Look, I'm just going to go freshen up, okay? Okay. Mrs. Max Holden. Real solid ring to that. She's gone for good. The court, she took everything. I left no forwarding address. Look, you know what this is all about. She's told everyone that she's pregnant, right? So she's so embarrassed about that, she knows that we're eventually going to find out the truth. So right. she just took off before she's totally humiliated. Right. And if she decides to come back this way, she can pretend that she had a miscarriage. Exactly. That's all there is. Court, I am delighted that you're taking it this way. Hey, Ma, come on. It's a good riddance. Are you kidding me? No more phone calls in the middle of the night. No more chasing me around and bumping into her every time I turn around. No more tricks or traps to try to get me back. No, I'm a free man now, Ma. She is out of my life for good, and she's never coming back. And I'm, I'm real happy about that. Cord, I know that you're in pain, and I know that you love Tina very much. But once again, this is proof of the kind of person that Tina really is. But, look, maybe now you can get on with your life, huh? Yeah. Well, I have an appointment. Uh, look, Ma, thanks for bringing by my hat, and thanks for the news. She left you this, too. Oh, boy. 
spray. It looks like pictures. Do you want me just to take it and throw no, it away? No, Ma, I can handle whatever there is in this envelope. All right, well, look, I'll be back later, so if you need me, you call, okay? Thanks, Ma. You know, I'm starting to get real mad at myself for being affected by everything that woman does to me. Cord, don't be so hard on yourself. She was the love of your life. You can't expect it to die that easily. Yeah, well, right now, it's all mixed up with the anger and the frustration of the betrayals. I, I don't know how I could even feel any more love for her. You can feel... You're a human being with emotions and feelings. You're not some robot. You can't turn things like that on and off at will. All right, uh... There is some kind of surprise in here. I'm just going to open up the envelope and get it over with. Cord Roberts, is that you? <laughs> oh, Lord. Steve. Steve Holm, how you doing, man? Excuse me. <laughs> that would take a long talk. What? What the hell are you doing in Landview, Pennsylvania? Well. Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> Well, I certainly feel better. Oh, and it shows. <laughs> uh, I was just checking out this map here so I get my bearings. We don't get lost. You know, I'm really starting to feel up again about this whole thing. And I think a good night's sleep really did it. I mean, that sleep on the airplane, that was the first time I think I haven't cried myself into unconsciousness. Tina, I swear to you again on my beloved mother's grave that I was put on this earth to wipe away your blues and fill your days and nights with fun and contentment. <laughs> Well, somewhere deep inside of me, I must believe that, or else I would not have done this very crazy thing here. Ah, uh, now. <laughs> and you know what? I also think that somebody up above must not hate me, or else they would not have put you into my life uh -huh. to help cheer me up. That's what I told you. It's destiny, baby. <laughs> now, come on. See the city first, then our new home. Hmm? Oh, and I want to pick up something for Don Alonzo, something from Max and Tina Holden. I sure hope I like him as much as you do. Oh, you will. He's one of the finest men you're ever going to meet. Uh. Oh, uh, here he is. Oh, Joey forgot his little bear. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. I had a real crisis last night at bedtime when he discovered it. I promised him I'd come over this morning and... Pick up old Fitzpatrick, so he'd be there when he got home today. How did the transition go last night? How did Vicky hold up? Well, you mean you don't know? I figured you'd be over here five seconds after I drove out of the driveway. No, no. I telephoned five seconds after you drove out of the driveway. Oh. Vicky wasn't speaking with anyone last night. Not even you? Well, maybe there's hope for her after all. So what are you going to do? Just uh, camp out here until she comes down and kind of force her to see you? Okay, Buchanan, I know exactly how you feel about me. And I know about your paranoid fantasies that you've managed to convince yourself are actually true. So you don't have to keep reminding me every time we meet. I have a good memory. Hmm. As opposed to my wife, who, if, if she had her memory back, she would drop you in a flat second. And what are you going to do? Show up here every day to put her under more and more pressure. I have a right to show up here. I'm still married to her, Dennison, remember? So why don't you knock it off? The last thing in the world Vicky needs right now is to see us in a fight. Don't tell me what to do or what not to do. Or what my wife needs or doesn't need. Tom, I don't want to yell. I don't want to argue. I don't want to fight. I just stopped by to pick up some things for the kids and... Uh, Little Fitzpatrick for little Joey. I just stopped by to give Vicky some support and a sympathetic ear if she needs to talk. Yes, well, I suppose she does need that. I also plan to suggest that we make an appointment with Dr. Krauss to have her memory worked on. Now, you may not believe this, Clint, but I want to see her back and complete as a whole woman, regardless of how it affects you or me. Excuse me. Uh... Oh, Heron. Heron. I got what I came for, and I was just on my way, uh, just on my way out. Think you still asleep? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I knocked twice, but there's no response. I see. Well, would you tell her I stopped by to pick up some things, and uh, I'll have the boys call as soon as they come home from school. Huh? You take care. 
You too, son. Uh, would you like to wait any longer, Mr. Dennison? Yes, Sharon. I'd like to give her another hour. If she's not up by then, I want to wake her up. Um, I want to make sure that she is uh, sleeping and not uh, not physically ill from all the heartbreak. Yes, sir. Someone I want you to meet. Kate, Steve Holden. Hi. Nice to meet you, man. You too. Steve and I would go way back. We were like little kids. You know, our mothers used to be best friends back in El Paso. Then his family moved away. And you recognize each other? Well, we hooked up about, what, three years ago on the rodeo circuit. I didn't last long. Not like a Bronco buster here. I heard those stories. I'm surprised either one of you can walk. <laughs> oh, I still got the aches and the pains. Oh, hey, come on. Hey, have a seat here. Uh, what's going on? What are you doing here? Well, chasing after my brother Max. Max? Is he in town, too? Well, he was until yesterday. I'm surprised he didn't look you up. No, I, I haven't seen him. Uh, what's he up to? What's he want here? Well, I'm not sure. But I guess he got what he wanted. A nice, rich lady to buy him a ranch in Buenos Aires. Uh, hold on a minute. I, I think I'm a couple chapters behind. I thought your family had this great little ranch back in Texas. Yeah, well, we did. A failing one. Debt-ridden. It killed Pa, and then Ma died about six months ago, so the whole oh. place is on the market. I think I could pay off all my debts, but it looks like I'm starting over. What are you going to do, go join your brother? Hell no, I wasn't even invited. Well, I guess the big question then is, what are you going to do? Any ideas? Damn it. I looked through his room and found absolutely nothing. Therefore, it is safe to assume that he left no will, and you know what that means, my friend? That the Bella Vista is our ranch, partner. Terrific. <laughs> we'll go back to my ranch and we'll have a little sip of cognac and wait to hear that horrible news about my old neighbor, my poor friend, Don Alonso. And if this Max Holden gives us any trouble, we'll take care of him the same way, all right? Okay, all right? That is a half an hour. I, I really shouldn't be interfering with your work. No, you really shouldn't. But I'm glad you are. You know, after you left, I've just been kicking myself for barging in and uh, getting angry about Jamie. We settled that. Well, here we are on the verge of a relationship. Hey, thought we crossed the verge. <laughs> huh? Quarreling about Jamie is what did my marriage in with Charles. I don't want us to be finished on the same sorry subject. So I, I, I don't want to talk about him anymore. You don't? Mm, absolutely. Mum's the word? Uh, yes. Promise? Mm. Good. Okay, so, um, have you spoken to Vicky? <laughs> I tried last night, and she was asleep, and then I called this morning, and she was asleep, so I left a message. I have a funny feeling she's ignoring me, <laughs> avoiding me. Sometimes clients write their attorneys off and they lose the case. Well, but see, Vicky and I were very close in, on this ordeal, and I... How could you avoid it? Uh, listen, I still think Judge Guernsey was very wise in his decision to... Turn down the divorce petition, give Clint the kiss. No way he's getting involved in the foreseeable future. If you're referring to Vicky's involvement with Tom Dennison, I can assure you he's not using the amnesia to further her dependence on him. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Because that just means the Buchanans will be together again as soon as Vicky regains her memory. Doesn't sound to me like you're very distant on this case either. I, no, no, I'm not. I mean, I've known him for a long time. Besides, I mean, that's the real pleasure in this profession, isn't it? Your relationship with your clients. I know it's what attracted me to the law. How about you? Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe it was something that happened to me in high school. Yeah? Do you really want to hear this? Of course I do. Well, I... Um... I was accidentally on this debating team in high school, and they asked me to sort of asked us to parallel a political situation in the country and I was defending someone who was being pro persecuted and it was just very exhilarating lightning struck Judith Russell Rothovich Rothovich yeah that's my father's family name he changed it when he came to this country oh, anyway the, the point of it is that um, there I was defending this person who was being prosecuted and I felt like I was helping them and it was it was it was fabulous feeling it was i felt like i had a gift 
you did have a gift. So I guess it was just after law school that you fell in love with Charles, huh? Uh, yeah, we were very mismatched. It was all wrong from the beginning. But then there was this very intense uh, attraction between us. Mm. Well, you heard the rest. So then I was a public defender for about 10 minutes. But his mother hated it. So there was Charles with a lot of friends and colleagues who, was, who were always getting involved with the law and having trouble. So I was defending these people. And I guess I lost my, my sight of my goal. Lucky for me, you didn't end up in corporate law. Elizabeth and Charles tried that. They oh. thought it would clean me up, but I absolutely refused. And so now I am defending the people I want to defend. I guess I made the right decision. Yeah, sure did. Well, enough about me. What do you think of me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tell me more about yourself. Oh, honey, it ain't quite so uh, idyllic. Afraid my first burning passion to defend the underprivileged gave way to something else. See, I, I began to see the law as a stepping stone to politics, and politics is a stepping stone to power. And... Wait a minute. That doesn't fit in with the image of the man I'm beginning to know. Must have been another guy, I suppose. I mean, I went off the deep end for Dorian Lord. She just fed every ounce of ambition I had. I ran for governor a few years. I was elected. Oh, wait a minute. I remember that. We were in Washington. Wait, weren't you asked to resign? Yeah. Matter of a shady campaign contribution. Oh. But I learned. I'm, I'm no dummy. I mean, I never again. It wasn't long after that Cassie came into our lives. <sighs> Strange how you can evolve into someone else. So I guess we both ended up in situations that we never dreamt of. Like now. Former adversaries looking at each other. Something other than hostility. I don't know what I'm going to do now, Cord. Uh, up until my conversation with Max yesterday, I thought I would continue the family spread. But now, hey, look, why don't you stick around and leave you for a little bit? I tried and like it. Maybe it'll be the same for you. Well, I can't blame you if you met your wife here. Oh, I'm not. No, uh, Kate's not, not my wife. Uh, See, I'm separated right now. We're headed for a divorce. Oh, hey, sorry for the mistake. Well, maybe I'll meet a nice young lady like uh, your friend, Kate. Right? <laughs> yeah, maybe you will. <laughs> hey, look, the people here are really great. A lot of things to do here, too. Well, that's good, because I need to find work. Yeah? Well, what can you do? Well, I don't know. I can build most anything, fix most anything, including electrical stuff, plumbing. Well, I tell you what, we'll put our ear to the ground. Maybe we'll come up with something for you. Yeah. You two are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, maybe I better tell the desk that I'm not checking out today, make sure I still got a room. Well, I tell you what, Kate and I are staying here, too, so if you need anything, you just give us a call. 